It's Play in the Shed Day again, so what exciting, fun and challenging job have I got for myself today? Well, I want to build a collet, but not for the mill, I want a collet to fit in the end stock of the lathe. And that has a smaller taper. I know I could just go out and buy one, but this is more of a challenge. I've got some stock lying around. So I'll use these two pieces of steel. So first job, just clean up the steel. This large uh, diameter steel is stuff that I got for free from an engineering shop. Got no idea what grade it is, but it turns really nicely. I was led to the offcut bin and said, there you go, help yourself. I'm fitting the smaller diameter stock into this large diameter stock and then I'm going to weld the two together. Whatever this steel is, it's quite hard. So I'm taking a, a number of passes with graduating sizes of drill. Now I'm just turning down my shaft stock to the size that will fit into the large stock hole. Then it'll be ready for welding. Now this is the sort of fit that I aim for and really get. Perfect. So now it's time for a bit of TIG welding action. Now I've got the two pieces joined, I can true up the large piece. There was no point doing it beforehand, because now I can be sure that both pieces are aligned. The button insert cleans up the weld nicely. Now I'm measuring the largest diameter of the taper, which is 18 mil. And so I'll turn the shaft down to that largest diameter. I probably haven't got my order of operations right, but it seems to me that I want to cut the thread next. So I'm just measuring the outside diameter of the original and turning my stock down to that diameter before I start cutting the thread. It doesn't show up real well but I've got just a puftainth less than the original diameter. That's good enough for me. So, what sort of thread is it? 
and I find using my thread gauge that it's a 1.5 mil thread. Now my little lathe doesn't have automatic change gears. I've got to manually swap out all the ratios. My little chart here tells me that 1.5 has a 60H, 6080 and then a H50, H being just a uh, spacer. And it's on feed setting A. So, do all the changes. It's tedious, but, you know, it's only time. And I'm retired, so time doesn't matter. My lathe does have one of those thread setting wheel thingies that tell you when to engage and disengage the drive, but I find them a pain. So once I start, I just leave the drive engaged, I stop, reverse, pull out, reverse, start again, leaving it the um, drive engaged the whole time. I find that the easiest. So let's give it a try. Uh, it's still it's it goes on but it's still tight so it needs another pass this is pretty much just a spring pass just cleans up the threads and then a bit of a smooth off with some sandpaper also helps just to get the rough edges off and with that done Ah, uh, that's good, that's, that's firm, no slop at all, lovely. I'll be using this same original collet nut for my built collet nut because I'll only ever be using one at a time. Speaking of order of operations, <laughs> I decided it was a, a good opportunity now to, uh, to put the slots in for the spanner. The spanner will hold the collet um, in place while the cap is screwed on. And my calculations tell me that I need to just take two mil off either side. And as we say, then Bob will be my uncle. Right, second flat completed. Now it's time for a test. How does the spanner fit? Ah, lovely. A nice slide-on fit. So with that little job done, it's back to the lathe and now for the technical bits. I have to cut the taper. Well, I'm putting my dead centre in the lathe and I'm using the gauge and I'm angling the top slide so that when I wind the top slide the gauge stays on zero. Took a bit of fiddling to get that but I've got it so now it's time to do the cutting. It is a very slight taper indeed. A number of passes later and it's time to check it. So I'm just going to put black all over it and then shove it into the end stock and see what I get. Theoretically I should see marks all along that shaft when I pull it out. Now it doesn't show up very well on the video, but I can see that there are marks all along that shaft, so I've got it pretty well right. Amazing! Alright, now it's time for the other end. The other end has got a um, taper in it as well, so I'm just measuring the minor diameter inside, and I'll cut that minor diameter out first, and then I'll cut the taper.
I also need to know how deep to make the hole. So I'm going to do that, measure that now. My large drills really aren't up to the task. But persevere and then finish off with the boring bar. Yep, that's close enough. Now I need to set the top slide to the angle of the taper of the inside of that original. So I've got the original back in the, in the chuck. I'm just turning the boring bar around. I reckon that um, if I align the boring bar with that taper, then that should be it. That should do me the job. Well that all went pretty well. Now it's time to try a collet and the original collet nut. That all tightens down right, feels okay. But let's test it for, sh for real. So into the end stock and I'm putting a, an M8 drill tap in the collet. I'll tighten that up and I'll see whether I can power tap with this collet. So first I've just got a scrap of aluminium. I've already drilled out the tapping size and we wind it in and it cuts without any problem at all. Reverse the lathe and pull back on the tailstock and it's good. Final test. Yep, everything worked nicely. But the real test is, will it tap steel? So again with a scrap of steel already drilled out to the right size and I found the trick is to make sure I keep a fair bit of pressure when I'm winding in the tailstock and it cut beautifully using a spiral tap. These spiral taps are fantastic. It tapped the thread without any effort at all. And my homemade collet worked beautifully. Held everything nice and firm. No slippage. I'm really happy with that. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.